All right. Greetings, and we're opening the meeting to, of the Town Council of Yucca Valley on April 16th, 2024. We got a little bit of a late start at 6.05, and we are going to go through the call to order. Oh, that's right. We came out of closed session. There was nothing to report. Thank you. Yes, the town council met in closed session. With respect to all of the items on the closed session agenda, there's no reportable action. Okay. So we will open our meeting today and with a call to order. Roll call. Council members Abel. Here. Dennison. Here. Droz. Here. Schooler. Here. And Mayor Lombardo. Here. Uh, we're going to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance today. The pledge is going to be uh, led by John Adderley, our uh, custodian here, and important part of keeping this place running. So, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Remain standing. We're going to have uh, Becky... Turn Kelly from the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, and Becky is going to lead us in an invocation. Thank you, Becky. Our Father in heaven, we are thankful to be gathered together here today as members of the community. We are thankful for our local leaders, for these civil servants, and for the dedication of their time and efforts and sacrifices they make to serve our community. We pray that you will please bless them and their families and their homes. We ask that you please bless our community um, with love and unity. We ask that you please bless these proceedings today um, with the to be guided by um, mutual respect and love and connection one with another. We are so thankful to live in a country where we are free to govern ourselves. And we ask you to, again, please bless our community um, and those who, who serve and who strive to um, make our community better. And we say this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Becky. Be seated. Do we have any presentations, introductions, or recognitions? No? Okay. I am going to uh, give a proclamation which would go under <coughs> recognitions. And this is uh, a proclamation of the town of Yucca Valley, Sexual Assault Awareness Month, April 2024. Whereas the town of Yucca Valley works to end the many forms of violence in our community, acknowledging the reality that sexual violence is one such form, including rape, child sexual abuse, sexual exploitation, and sexual harassment, and others, and whereas the town of Yucca Valley recognizes the importance of sexual abuse awareness to educate the community of the debilitating crimes against men and women of all ages, and whereas the theme of the 2024 Sexual Assault Awareness Month's campaign is building connected communities, calling on all new partners and community members to expand sexual assault prevention efforts and ensure that next generation fosters attitudes that promote healthy relationships, equality, and respect. And whereas the town of Yucca Valley joins partners against violence in advocating awareness to take action in preventing sexual violence. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed, I, Robert Lombardo, mayor of the town of Yucca Valley, on behalf of the entire town council, do hereby proclaim April 2024 as Sexual Assault Awareness Month and each day of the year is an opportunity to create change for the future. Presented the 16th day of April, 2024. 
Thank you for letting me do that. Uh, let's go to the approval of agenda. Mayor, I'll move for approval as presented. Second. Council members Abel? Yes. Dennison? Yes. Droz? Yes. Schooler? Yes. And Mayor Lombardo? Yes. Now moving on to consent agenda. All items listed on the consent agenda are routine matters of formal documents covering previous town council instruction. Items are enacted by one motion and a second without separate discussion unless members of the town council or town staff request dialogue on a specific item. At the beginning of the meeting, requests for public comment on the consent agenda items should be filed with the town clerk. Uh, is there anybody that wants to do that? Let's go to, we need a, a motion. Anyone in the public? Or discussion? Anyone in the public? Uh, was there anybody in the public wishing to comment? Mayor, I don't need to pull any items or desire to pull any items. And if there aren't any other items to pull, I'll make a motion that we uh, approve consent agenda as prepared one through four. Okay. I, I, I will third. No. <laughs> okay, so it's been moved and seconded. Who do we? Who did the second go to? We credit? It'll, it'll go to Droz. No. Mayor Pro Tem. Mayor Pro Tem Droz. Okay, who won the rock, paper, scissors? For second. Oh, first was <laughs> first was Merle. <laughs> okay. We're having too much fun up here. Okay. Okay. Council members Abel. Yes. Dennison. Dennison, yes. Droz? Yes. Schooler? Yes. And Mary Lombardo. Yes. Okay, and that was items uh, one through four. Now we're on to uh, department reports, townwide beautification program update with signage. Well, good evening, Mayor and Council. The recommended action this evening is that the Town Council receives an update regarding the Town Strategic Plan Initiative and Action Plan related to highway beautification and town entry signage and provide direction to staff regarding project goals, scope, and desired outcomes. As the council will recall, uh, within your strategic plan, uh, one of the priorities identified was for staff to present alternative parkway design standards to the council for direction and initial action with a specified focus on town entry points. Town council had subsequent con concert conversation on this topic and looked at um, just only refurbishing existing signs, looking at new entry monument development, town branding development, as well as branding and wayfinding. And the council's direction was to focus on new entryway sign and monuments as part of that conversation. Tied into that public art town entry beautification program, signage would also be tied uh, through the efforts in Sue's department for input by artists. And you can see the different types of signs. And the council and the community have seen all different types as you've gone to other communities throughout the region. Um, you can see the different looks that the Yucca Valley sign has had over the years. Sign from 29 Palms, Sedona, and I'm anticipating that's Medford, Oregon. What does the town have for options today that the staff has identified? Uh, alternative one is the existing location. And this is an old uh, view of what the sign has looked like over time. Again, another perspective. It's just as you come up uh, eastbound over the top of Homestead Hill, uh, dropping down into town as you're headed towards commit the signal at Camino del Cielo sign on the right-hand side of the road. This is from the east side looking back to the west when you've dropped in uh, over the top of the hill. This is a bird's eye view, and on the next slide we're gonna talk about some of the constraints that we're dealing with. Um, you've got the cabinet shop, and then the arrow is pointing to where the sign is located. That sign is currently on private property. Uh, it is not a town-owned or maintained sign. It's originally established by service groups uh, in Yucca Valley. Um, and it's not, today it is not regularly maintained by anybody. 
Is that an alternative for use? It is an alternative. You would look at establishing an agreement with the current property owner to have control, access, liability, all of those standard things that we look at when you talk about a town facility. We'd then walk through the rehabilitation plan tied together with the public art process. Coordination of installation and then identifying a long-term maintenance program at that existing location. A second location, um, a second alternative site that has been identified is at the intersection of Camino del Cielo and Highway 62, specifically the southwest leg of that intersection. And that's in the lower photo um, on the right-hand side of the screen, and we'll kind of walk through this location a little bit. Um, this would be new town-owned sign. It's completely on town-controlled property. You have uh, a lot more freedom, per se, of the look, the feel, the visibility. It is at a traffic signal, so you're going to have vehicles not just stopping, but you're also going to have vehicles that are turning to go to the recently rehabbed hotel as well as down to the golf course. So it is kind of a key intersection in terms of activities within the community. Um, and then you can use this as an opportunity to expand this theme to other locations if this is the desired alternative. Um, Town-owned. This shows that it, it, if you can imagine, it's almost like an inverse cul-de-sac in a residential neighborhood. There's a pretty significant amount of real estate for the town to work with. Um, I think there's more land there than any sign we could ever imagine putting up in terms of reasonable size. And it's, it has relatively good visibility in terms of the driver's window. It's not elevated as, as high above the highway as the current sign is on the top of Homestead Hill. Um, somebody did a little bit of Photoshop work here and threw in a couple uh, examples. Uh, Queens Creek, Arizona, uh, Rancho Mirage, California, and their bighorn sheep somehow found its way to Yucca Valley. Whoops. Laguna Niguel, um, still looking for the water, but Laguna Niguel has made its way here as well. So um, there's a lot of room to work with, um, pretty open template for artists and designers. Um, seems to make sense. Next steps in the process, develop the sign parameters and chosen location, incorporate into call for public art process. Address any technical aspects. So, for example, Public Works is going to be looking at what are the best types of materials to be used in terms of minimal maintenance for repair, graffiti removal, if those things occur, and then incorporate public comment uh, throughout those, all of those processes. Um, recommended action, again, is to discuss the West Entry monumentation alternatives and provide any input and direction as desired this evening. That concludes the staff recommended action. Be happy to answer questions following public comment. Okay. Is there anybody in the public that wishes to comment on the IPF signage at the West End? One. Okay. Any artists out there that are interested in this? No? Okay. Anybody online? No. Quiet night. Okay. Back to council then. Anybody want to comment? Well, I thought uh, location two sounded fantastic since we own that. It's highly visible. Plus, I always worry about if we do put up something that uh, could be photographed, it would be much safer for people to make the turn, park on that uh, our outside highway, get out, take a picture. We'd have some room for them. They wouldn't be out there in traffic or parking next to the highway. So I think that's a great location. And uh, yeah, design can come later, but the location I think is fantastic right there. And, and like you said, it's at the beginning of town, but it's, it's easily uh, accessible and, and very much more vis visible as you're approaching. Council Member Schooler. I agree with that. That seems like a, a bit of a no-brainer uh, to be on town property rather than uh, private property, uh, as well as the visibility, the access. Um, I, I have one question. Is, are we only talking about the West End sign at this point? We're starting out with the West End location. Once that is underway, going out to the artist and starting to develop those concepts, I would anticipate once that final concept has approval, then we'll start looking at the next locations. Next location for same design? Same, same or similar design, yes, sir. Yeah. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, Council Member Dennison. 
Yeah, I want to thank staff for uh, bringing this back to us. Uh, we discussed that a couple times on the uh, monument signage for the town, and it looks like uh, you've met all the marks that I was looking for. A great location, as Council Member Abel said, uh, and I think as you get folks and you see them in Josh's Record regularly, 29 Palms also, uh, visitors to the area will pull over wanting to take a photograph, and they have the opportunity now to be on that outer highway that is only basically accessible from that one point. Uh, my follow-up question would be, uh, being on private property, the existing monumentation coming into town, uh, what would that sign uh, do? Just, you know, we don't want it to continue to look worse over time and be identified with the town, but possibly work with the property owner to come up with some kind of cleanup for that area and we'll, we'll work with that. We'll make sure that's on our list. Thank you. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem, Charles. Um, yeah, I'm in full agreement with everyone. That's the perfect spot. Um, right at Camino del Cielo and the highway and the pull-off area, the outer highway. Um, everybody said it all, but um, that's the perfect spot. And later we'll talk about design, design, I assume. So whether it would be seen from both sides or, or just one side, but I'm sure it's both sides. But anyway, um, yeah, that's perfect. Thank you. All righty. And I also agree. I think it's a great location, and I look forward to seeing some of the design concepts. And I hope we can get a lot of artist input. Um, there were a couple of ideas that were thrown around about uh, that I'd like to see happen in the future. So we'll take it at this step here, and we'll see what happens in the future. Um, so let's have a vote. Anybody? Or you just I don't, need direction. I believe the council has provided sufficient direction okay. and no motion is required. So we'll move Mr. forward with that. Okay, we are on to item number six, which is the update on the Mojave Desert and Mountain Recycling Joint Powers Authority. Good evening, Honorable Mayor and Council. Um, this evening, the recommended action before you is that the Town Council receive and file this update on the, on the Mojave Desert and Mountain Recycling Joint Powers Authority. So just a little bit of history. Um, the Mojave Desert and Mountain Recycling Joint Powers Authority, we'll, we'll refer to it as the authority going forward because it's such a mouthful, <laughs> was formed in uh, 1991 and includes the town of Yucca Valley in addition to the cities of Adelanto, Apple Valley, Barstow, Big Bear Lake, Needles, 29 Palms, Victorville, and the surrounding unincorporated San Bernardino County. Uh, the authority shares uh, their the, the member's authority to plan and implement solid waste and recycling programs, and they focus on regional projects to provide standardized approaches and financial efficiency. So um, each of the uh, member cities have a council member or a supervisor that it represents, um, their, uh, represents their agency on the board of directors, and the uh, board of directors meet on a regular basis each quarter. And also the member agency staff meet on a monthly basis with the authority administrator, John Davis, which a lot of you know is a guru in all things uh, solid waste and recycling. Um, our meetings focus on emerging issues, new developments, regional concerns and updates, and they are intended to help guide the local programs and improve uh, regional coordination. So for the fiscal year 23-24, Yucca Valley's um, membership dues are $25,624 for the year, and the draft 24-25 budget projects an estimated increase of $661. So how these fees are established is each member pays an equal share of one-third of the expenses, and the remaining two-thirds is based on population. Um, and in your staff report, you can see a breakdown as to what each city pays on an annual basis for the fiscal year 23-24 year. Um, some current projects that the authority is assisting local jurisdictions with um, is first and foremost SB 1383 implementation and now we're switching over to compliance. Uh, we've been working on 1383 stuff for a really long time. I've been bringing it to you for a really long time as well. And we finally were able to implement our organics programs at the beginning of this year. 
So over the last several years of the member agencies, we have been working together through just um, the vast regulations, first of all, and then working together and networking to come up with what programs will work for each of our specific jurisdictions to help the jurisdictions become compliant with the, the legislative regulations um, that Cal Recycle is requiring. So networking with fellow member agencies is, is huge with this authority and this JPA. Another project that the authority is helping with as well is curbside contamination project. Um, what that does is it's helping to identify materials that are improperly placed into the recycling organics and landfill carts. So the authority has contracted with a vendor called Recreate, which we actually had them come out here in 2021. And they, along with Burtek, uh, did an assessment and went and visited 102 Yucca Valley households. And um, it's, a, it's a project that is um, trying to find alternative ways to provide outreach and um, to improve the recycling. So they went to each of these households and lifted the lid and took a look and see what was in there and then left a, either an oops tag with, you know, hey, this doesn't belong in there or yeah, good job. This, uh, this, you know, all this is clean and you did a great job. And some people would come out and they were just kind of curious as to what was happening and um, they had some really good dialogue and conversation. So we're hoping to do that again now that we brought in our organics carts into the stream um, and we're hoping to do that where we can help people to be compliant. It, it's not gonna be a getcha type, you know, um, endeavor. It's just trying to help people understand that, you know, yeah, a garden hose, while it is made of rubber, it's not recyclable. It goes in the trash. <laughs> um, the other things, too, that the authority works on is um, Yucca Valley receives $5,000 from the authority as part of the budget for assisting with edible food recovery assistance. Um, and the reason why the town is getting $5,000 is because we, we had originally had a contract with Fine Food Bank um, that was through the authority that would help us uh, with our edible food recovery programs. And that contract just wasn't really working out. So we instead adopted an MOU with the County Department of Public Health. And they are now providing um, edible food recovery assistance for the town and providing the inspections and, and meeting with the tier one and tier two generators and really helping to kind of uh, wrap their arms around our edible food recovery program, which is part of SB 1383 regulations that the town is responsible for. Um, also, the authority provides a lot of regional public outreach. Um, they have educational flyers, signage, um, to help the jurisdictions comply with local legislation. We also have um, folks on staff with the authority or contractors that help us with um, social media posting. So we've created um, Facebook pages. There's one called Yucca Valley Recycles Facebook page. And uh, we put posts on there to help uh, waste reduction, recycling, there's composting tips and stories and promote uh, local events. So for example, the shredding event that we just had last Saturday or two Saturdays ago on April 6th, um, that post reached 520 people and was viewed 734 times. So it, it does reach out there and I share a lot of those posts onto the town's Facebook page as well. Um, Finally, the authority also helped to manage a Cal Recycle Household Hazardous Waste Grant that was promoting refillable one pound propane cylinders. Um, the local business Vagabond Welders um, hosted a couple of events and uh, distributed the free cylinders and they also continue to refill those. So if you have a reusable propane cylinder and you're looking to refill it, Vagabond is where you need to go and they will refill it for you. Um, other than that, um, Yucca Valley staff is very active with the authority and we, I really rely on networking opportunities that the authority provides with the member agencies to make sure that we can interpret all of the ch many changing solid waste and recycling laws coming down um, and making sure that we can work together to identify and implement local programs to help us be compliant. Um, and so the, um, again, the recommended action is just that you file and receive this 
update on the authority, and I'd be happy to answer any questions following public comment. All right. Excellent job. Uh, you can see you've really done a lot of work on it. Is there anybody in the public that wishes to comment? Anybody online? It saddens me. Okay, back to the, back to the council. Yeah, I'd like to Let's say one thing. Let's start at this end. Um, Jessica, I just want to say I'm a part of this, but Jessica is like the know-all. You mentioned John, John being the um, John. Uh, what's his last name? Uh, Davis. Davis. Yeah, being the guru. But you really, you're the guru around here. Um, uh, every question I have, you answer and, and promptly, and or you figure it out. So, um, thank you for all the hard work. You really, you really know a lot about this. So, <laughs> I know it's a big part of your day. So, thank you, Council Member Dennis. Oh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, so, two things. I want to. Uh, how is the public's uh, reception of our new organics program and the distribution of the cans, the uses, and Hopefully, compliance. Sorry, I thought I pushed it. Um, everything has been really great. Um, I think the marketing campaign that we put out um, at the end of last year uh, that Burtek really helped a lot with the flyers the letters that we sent out to everybody, um, I really did not receive, I was I was expecting to receive a ton of calls and I really did not. Um, I received the most phone calls from folks in the unincorporated county area because some of their uh, outreach and stuff was a little confusing and they weren't quite sure where to go, what to do. <clears throat> so I directed them back to the county folks because unfortunately I can't speak on their programs. Um, but yeah, I didn't, it went really well. It's been really well received. And it's funny, I was even um, driving back into the office today after lunch and I saw three different houses where they were out doing uh, weeding and they had their green cart right next to them. So it was cool. <laughs> so I, I appreciate that. And that's, you know, that's actually a reflection of the hard work that you do for our town here. So thank you for that. You. And I have one more question in a, the, uh, uh, the reusable uh, propane cylinders, the small ones that look like a big tomato soup can or something, I still use, I'm using up all my old ones. But as people get those out of their camping supplies and stuff, are those still available locally to get the refillable cylinders? Um, I through believe, the program? I be, um, through the program, no, because I believe the grant closed. And so I think it's, I will double check though, and I will get back to you. But I don't believe, because I believe the grant has closed already, and we've given out all of the, all the, one pound refillable cylinders. Okay. But I will find out where you can get more if you want to. I, I would like to know there. that because yeah. I think as we're now getting into uh, springtime and uh, school will be letting out, uh, camping activities will continue. And I think if we can you know, help to get rid of the disposable cylinders into our landfills would be helpful. Yeah. And uh, one last thing is um, for the Shred Day, that's a great event for the community to help uh, manage their documents and get them taken care of and disposed of properly. Uh, I might say maybe a couple weeks after tax day would be beneficial for the community as opposed to two weeks before. Because yeah. they may want to get rid of a lot of stuff. So that was it. <laughs> that's Thank probably you. true. Yeah, no problem. And I just want to let you know, too, we have a community cleanup day coming up on Saturday, May 4th. So that's our next big event, and that's going to be at the Burtex Transfer Station as well. Will they have shredding available there? No, because they have to bring the special trucks in for the shredding, so um, no for that. But I will plan it another shred event um, next year, and I'll take your advice and may hopefully do it after tax day. <laughs> Council Member Schooler, comments? Council Member Abel, none. Okay. So, um, yeah, I think you've done an excellent job of explaining it all and uh, I think your ad campaign did help huh so it's been going pretty smooth usually change is very difficult and I know when I first saw it I was going well this is not going to be easy but apparently it's working well and it it does serve a good purpose I filled my can to the brim uh, the other day with uh, yard waste as I trimmed some trees and did some things um, so it's I'm finding it useful what I can't put in my mulch pile, I put in there. So uh, moving on, we're to item number seven, which is the introduction of an ordinance relating to demands and claims for damages. And over here, 
Oh, over there. Okay. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, the item before you uh, this evening is the introduction of Ordinance uh, 315 related to demands and claims for damages against the town. This particular ordinance has not been comprehens comprehensively reviewed or updated since February 9th of 2006. The recommendation to, before you is to amend Chapter 3.16.010 by revising the amount that the town manager has the authority to approve from 5,000 to 50,000. This will allow the town manager to execute settlement documents in a timely fashion pursuant to town, town council direction. So staff's recommendation is to amend chapter 3.16.010 by increasing the amount of town manager authority from 5,000 to 50,000. That concludes st the staff report. Staff will be ha happy to answer any questions after public comment. All righty. Is there anybody in the public wanting to comment on this exciting new ordinance? No? How about online? No? Okay. Town Council? Council yeah, it, it's in the, in the staff report discussion. It shows that um, actually while there might have been discussion, it really hasn't been... Uh, Changed since the incorporation of 1991. The amount has not changed since. So I think that's more than appropriate yes, with correct. inflation and the cost of uh, you know settlements that um, you know our our staff and council work on. This is an appropriate move, and I would make the recommendation to move the item forward. Okay, Council Member Dr um, Mayor Pro Tem Droz. No comment. No comment. Okay, down there comments. Just the motion, I'll second. Oh, yes. okay. Thank you. Moving forward. Motion and second. Could you repeat the first and second, please? For motion moved Denison. it. Okay. Sorry. And second. Okay. Fuller. Thank you. <coughs> so we have council members Abel. Yes. Dunnison. Yes. Droz. Yes. Schooler. Yes. And Mayor Lombardo. Yes. <laughs> All right. That concludes that. We're on to future agenda items. Is there? Any future agenda items? No. I don't have any. Okay. Um, all righty. Let's go down to public comments. This is the time the town ta council takes to consider your comments on items which are not on the agenda. You are called to speak. Please state your name and community of residence. Please limit your comments to three minutes or less. Uh, inappropriate behavior, which disrupts, disturbs, or otherwise impedes the orderly conduct of the meeting will result in the forfeiture of your public comment privileges. Uh, the town council is prohibited by state law from taking action or discussing or discussion of items not on the printed agenda. But this is the public's opportunity to speak on any subject that they wish. Is there anybody in the public that would like to speak on any item? Please come to the podium, state your name and city of residence. Tell us what's on your mind. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Caroline Partamian. I live in Yucca Valley. And I just wanted to come down here to see what was up um, <laughs> and attend a town council meeting. Um, I also just applied for the YV Partnership Fund uh, as part of, I'm co-owner of Compound YV, which is an artist-run space down the street. And um, yeah, I just wanted to get more involved in what's going on here. I've also been working down um, for another job um, at a grant-funded position in 29 Palms for the Public Arts Advisory Committee. So it's really nice to be able to hear that you're trying to support public art with the sculpture that you're gonna put in for the Yucca Valley town sign. So that was very affirming to hear that there's support for the arts um, with the town council here. So yeah, I just wanted to introduce myself and I also encourage y'all to come see our current exhibition, which is a big sculpture exhibition by a local Yucca Valley artist as well named Ethan Primison. Um, so yeah, we host public workshops and events and we have a free event on Saturday evening as well. So I just encourage everyone to come check it out and just thank you for your time and also thank you for the opportunity to apply for the partnership fund. 
Can you, you give us uh, your location yeah. one more time? Yeah, give us the location. Yes, the location is 55379 Palms Highway. It's right between the Wellness Christian Center and Snake Bite Roadhouse Diner. Oh, yeah, nice. so okay, yeah, come by whenever. I'm usually there weekends, Friday to Sunday, noon to five. So yeah, the show up right now is really fantastic. But yeah, thank you for all your hard work. And yeah, um, yeah. thank you. Well, thank you for attending and commenting. It's nice Absolutely. of you to come mm -hmm. up. Is there anybody else in the public wishing to speak? Is there anybody online? Okay. Uh, we'll move on to uh, staff reports and comments. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Sue, any comments you have this evening? What? Of course. Uh, so, of course, um, in celebration of Earth Day, we want to invite everyone to come see the museum exhibit, Metamorphosis, which is all recycled art, all local artists. Uh, it's a great exhibit. Um, it's an annual event. Uh, so we'd like everyone to come see uh, that. And if they come this Saturday, April 20th, from 11 to 2, we're doing an Earth Day trading card workshop. Uh, at the museum, so make your, make your, make your artistic trading cards, uh, post some there at the museum at you know, our collective exhibit, trade them with the other people at the workshop, it's gonna be really cool. Uh, also, Saturday, April 27th, is gonna be a great day to visit the community center from nine to one. We're gonna have the health and community resource fair that we do in partnership with the Morongo Basin Healthcare District the Youth Commission is also putting on a teen fun day so you can get your health information. Teens can get some exercise on inflatable obstacle courses and a lot of fun. And then you can also swing by the Senior Center. They're having a little rummage sale from 9 to 1 as well. So it's going to be a real busy fun day here at the Community Center. And then um, May 4th, uh, back at the High Desert Nature Museum, they're going to be hosting a Wild West Pioneer Day celebration from 10 to 2. Uh, so a lot to do. Got our youth commission at work, um, and we also uh, just introduced our spring summer guide with some of our youth commissioners featured on the on the cover as well. So, come see us. Thanks. Thank you, Sue. Deborah, Alex. Um, yeah. Good evening, Council uh, Mayor and Council. Just to let, just to remind you, uh, tomorrow night at 5 p.m. at this room, we will be having a community meeting to discuss the master planning of the pickleball court and basketball courts that we're gonna be installing in the community center here and the expansion or the, what is the future for the skate park. So from, we dedicated five to six to talk about the pickleball court and the basketball court. And then we dedicate six to seven to talk to about the skate park that is we're gonna have here. So just wanna remind you that it's tomorrow night here at this room. It will be Zoom, so if anybody cannot attend and want to be attending by Zoom and participate, we did, uh, thanks to Jessica, we, did, we made that happen. So it is here. Thank you. An important opportunity to get comments on these things, which really help us and the whole town staff to get the projects that the town wants. So please participate. Tell your friends to participate. Okay, is there anybody else? Mayor and Council, just a couple of final comments, or one, one comment. Um, two items are gonna be coming before the Town Council on updates. We're gonna be bringing forward a private land development update at one of your meetings in May, and then Alex is gonna be bringing a capital projects update so that the Council is briefed on all of those projects. Jordan, I think you, Jordan, welcome. Um, I think Jordan, Mayor and Council, has a comment for the Council this evening. Good evening, Mayor and Council. I just wanted to provide a quick update on the Measure Y partnership applications. Um, we closed the application period uh, yesterday evening at 5 p.m. We received a record number of 22 applications for local nonprofit organizations for a total funding request of $410,000. So uh, staff is gonna be busy over the next two weeks reviewing all of those. Um, everyone submitted really complete application packets, so I don't think we have to chase anyone down for information, but we do wanna make sure that we go through everything uh, thoroughly. 
And then we're currently hoping to present uh, the scoring and recommendation to council at the first meeting in May. Um, we've let all of the applicants know to plan to be available for that meeting, either in person or online, so that they can be available for questions and comments. But um, just wanted to provide that update and let you know that we're plugging along on that project there. Sounds That's good. all for tonight. Jordan, I have a question. This is Council Member Abel. Um, on those applications, are we limiting the, did we limit the amount they could, each individual nonprofit could request, like it's only up to 50,000 or 25, or was it left so, open-ended? So we left the particular application open-ended, but they were made aware on the uh, program guidelines that the total recommended budget for the program is $100,000 for the year. So for all, all of the the nonprofits together is 100,000. Gotcha, thank as you. As of now. Thank you. Yeah, Jordan, Council Member Dennison, I just wanna say uh, thank you for the workshops you did uh, for those that are requesting to participate in Measure Y funding. And I think it's a great program for the community and the work the staff has been doing is very beneficial in many ways, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jordan. Mayor and Council, that concludes staff's comments this evening. All right, thank you. Uh, now it's time for the council members' reports and comments. Uh, council member Abel. Yeah, I would like to thank the young lady for being here and introducing us uh, or in introducing yourself to us. I appreciate that. And, uh, and you will find that we are really excited to promote our local treasures, which are our artists and our, uh, our environment. So um, thank you for being here. Uh, one thing that wasn't mentioned is, our, and I'm not sure if you're aware of, but we're about ready to start installing utility box covers, wraps, done by local artists. So you'll see our utility boxes being updated here soon. Uh, so we're looking forward to seeing that. It's also going at the same time as Alex and his crew is getting up new corner street signs and I keep seeing more and more of them around town. So uh, getting those utility box wraps and uh, new street signs, everything else will look a little bit nicer uh, along the way. Um, I had the opportunity to uh, be on uh, Channel 3 with The Pulse. I wanted to thank Desert Oasis Healthcare for featuring our senior center and uh, the programs that are here, including our balance class that's uh, sponsored by Desert Oasis. Um, they're a great partner to have for healthcare up here in the high desert. And uh, I was a real pr privilege to be able to be on that show. And then also just to see the, uh, the uh, compliments they gave us throughout the programming about the friendliness of Yucca Valley and also the environment uh, and what services were available uh, for our seniors and also uh, how we're trying to meet the uh, transportation needs of our residents to get to healthcare. So anyway, it was real privilege to be able to be on that uh, program and um, no other meetings for me this, uh, this part of the month. So that's it for me tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Dennison. Oh, thank you, Mayor. So I wanna start off by just thanking the community. I attended a few events uh, this week. Uh, one of them was uh, for Reach Out Morongo Basin. Uh, they have an annual event called the Dessert Soiree. And um, there's a lot of folks that attend that event and they help raise money uh, for, the, for Reach Out Morongo Basin. And that allows partnerships within the community to improve our basin as a whole, but it definitely directs and helps Yucca Valley too. So. Uh, that was really nice to go there and see so many people taking the time out of their day to help raise funds for a very good group. Uh, another one was today attending Partners Against Violence. Uh, they had an open house at their facility here in town and it was very nice to see their dedication to this. And uh, they're a very broad program, not just here, uh, but their resources stretch throughout the entire county. Uh, they have a, a center in San Bernardino, they have a center in the low desert and we're fortunate enough to have one right here so when we look at this month uh, for any type of violence and whether it's uh, um, struggles with uh, children, adults, or even later in life, if those things uh, were part of your past, there's so many resources out there. Spread the word that they're available and there are people out there that really care and they put in a lot of time and work. And one other thing, I've had a few people uh, based on our earlier discussions at the council about uh, looking at dirt roads and improvements within our community, uh, primarily for safety to make sure that the roads are passable. 
And um, I've gotten a lot of positive comments and people talking about that they would like to get involved and, and bring forward their comments on their areas and concerns. So very helpful. I appreciate that they're actually taking the time to walk up to me and go, hey, I got something to talk about. So it's been great. Uh, that's all I have for tonight. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Uh, Council Member Schooler. Nothing to add this evening. Okay. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Gross. Um, I really have nothing either, except I want to say that I missed the last two council meetings. Um, it was just personal issues, uh, health stuff. Um, no big deal, but anyway, but I've been away from, for two meetings, so I just want to say it feels really good to be back. Um, it's nice to be back in this, in this environment and uh, to see all the good things that are going on in town. And uh, I watched the meetings online, and I saw my empty seat here, and I started crying. But anyway, no, ser seriously, um, it's good to be back. So uh, thanks a lot. All right. I have just a few quick comments. I want to thank those uh, people that participated in today's uh, council meeting, Becky and, and David, um, Dave, um, and Becky for being brave enough to stand up in front of the public, it's challenging for some people. And uh, they did a good job. Uh, I, also, I attended a fundraiser at the Morongo Basin uh, Boys and Girls Club that was for the Reach Out Morongo Basin also. And we had to sit at the mayor's table. <laughs> we sat at the table where it was all happening. No, it was, uh, it was fun. There's a large contingent of people that really have their hearts in Yucca Valley. And they also open up their pop pocketbooks to help in ways that really make the quality of life here better for a lot of people. And I encourage you to be involved in those kinds of things and to, if you're fortunate enough to be able to, you know, contribute to those kinds of things, we do really appreciate it. And it does make a marked difference in our ability to provide services. Uh, I was also at the... Uh, the thing today with the, at the uh, let's see partners to prevent sexual violence, and uh, that was a, a facility I hadn't been in before. It's over in the Monterey Business Center, and they provide a very important uh, service to people who are uh, victims of sexual abuse or violence. And uh, I'm glad that they're here in our community. I'm sad that there's a need for their services, but they do a wonderful job. And it's volunteer basis for the most part. Um, and so I encourage our community to uh, be available to help if that you're so moved. It's a wonderful cause and there's need for all sorts of help and volunteers are always greatly appreciated. They do training and that sort of thing. So. It's a good place to go to meet people and to be involved in your community and do something useful. Um, also want to give a shout out to Don Rao and her field rep, Glenn, and the Miss Yucca Valley uh, pageant participants that were at the fundraiser. They did a great job of the Vanna White thing with showing the, the auction items and uh, Don Rao and her husband contributed greatly to our success at fundraising. They had a pretty lively table up there, and uh, the bidding on some items was pretty fun. Um, it's something you had to be there, but there was this really cool purple duck, and um, it garnered a lot of attention. Mm -hmm. So let's see. Other than that, uh, our next meeting is uh, Yucca Valley Town Council. will be on Tuesday, May 7th, 2024, 6 p.m. here in the Yucca Valley Community Center, Yucca Room, and... That is the conclusion of the meeting. Thank you for attending.